Welcome back to Arabin Outdoors. Hey, I'm Arabin. You knew that, didn't you? Well, guys, the seasons have changed. We're going into winter. The temperatures are a lot cooler. So, it's time to... So, it's time to look at my bushcraft gear loadout. And, uh, I'm going to have to add some things. And, unfortunately, that means... I'm going to have to put this bag away until the spring. I'll tell you what, guys. I love this pack. I got this thing off of Amazon. It's a PKU. I don't know how many liters it is or what size it is. I mean, you can see here the size of the pack. And I love everything about it. It's a heavy canvas and leather combination. And most of the year... This is a pack that I can use for all my bushcraft stuff. So what I'm going to have to do, and the only thing I don't like about this pack, the only drawback, is this. If you look on the bottom, there is no molly, there are no rings, there is no way to strap a bedroll to the bottom of this pack. The way I configure my new tarp, my 10x10 tarp, that provides shelter. I do it in this shape like this. So the bottom part provides the uh, the ground cloth. And then this part of the ship. So five feet of it is shelter, protection from the wind and the rain. And the other five feet on the bottom is protection from the ground. I'm kind of cold natured. So it doesn't have to be real cold for me to be real cold. And that's why I need more room because in addition to just a wool blanket I need another blanket so I do have another blanket over here and like I say I could roll it and this together if I could put it to the bottom of this pack but right now that's not an option for me so I'm going to say goodbye for this pack just for the winter until it gets warm again and then I'll bring it back out because I love it to death and I'm going to replace this pack just for the winter with this pack you can see how much deeper this pack is how much more stuff it will hold so um, also in the winter I will need additional clothing items alright warm extra layers and right now this thing is maxed out I can't get anything else in here so this pack will allow me to get all of this gear in there to carry the extra blanket and the wool blanket because on the bottom of it you'll see I can strap those right onto the bottom but it's a deeper bag so it'll hold this plus extra clothing so I'm gonna be transferring what's in here into this bag I'm just gonna take this blanket out of the little case there and I'm just gonna shove it into the bottom that's how I usually do when I go backpacking with my sleeping bag I just kinda shove it into the bottom of the bag and it'll get compressed down real well. And then I'm going to take the other items out of this bag and put in there. So um, I'm going to start in the main compartment. And I'll just go through these items in short detail for you. I've got my pipe kit, which basically has some tobacco, a lighter, a tamper, and a pipe. That's my comfort item when I go bushcrafting. I carry my haversack rolled up. Now, you notice how full this bag is and how full the other bag is. So, where am I going to put my water? Where am I going to put my food? That's where I put my water, my food, and my haversack. Plus, when I get to camp, if I need to go foraging for tinder or anything else, I can just carry my empty haversack when I go foraging and put stuff in there. I have here uh, some rain gear. I have my frog togs, 
some of the best rain gear out there, I believe. Water bottle. Uh, again, this one is not for putting over the fire because it's not a single wall. But it is a nice quality. Um, it's one of the Ozark Trail from Walmart. i tell you what, it's, it's good quality. But this is how I'll carry my clean water. And that, along with the food, will go into the haversack. And then I usually carry a big smart bottle. I think it's like a liter. I also carry that in the haversack. Uh, for cooking, I've got my Stanley Cook Kit. Um, and I replaced that plastic ring on the top with a metal ring. And so that way you can actually hang it over the fire to boil water or whatever. But, um, and with that, I've got a metal drinking cup. I also have a uh, cold, cold weather beanie. This is a Carhartt beanie. I have some cold weather gloves here. These are by Earth Rags. And they are 100% wool gloves. They're very warm. These are not gloves that I would wear for working around the camp. I do have another pair of those kind of gloves. I'll get to them in a minute. But these are simply for sitting around the fire. Or if I'm really cold at night, I can sleep with these on. Um, these are solely for warmth. And boy, are they ever warm. Right now, I'm not going to open it up because these things are hard to fold. This is one of those Sterno stoves, but I use it as a wood stove. And I just got this bag that I found that it fits in perfectly. I have on my Amazon wish list a titanium stove that actually has a, a slimmer profile than this. And it's titanium, so it's lighter. Plus, I've had this Sterno stove for about 20 years, and it's just time to upgrade. But I always like to carry a small wood stove. Saw, I mean, um, I would rather carry a good knife and a saw in place of a hatchet or a tomahawk. You can process a lot of wood with a good knife and a saw. My knife of choice for my bushcraft kit is this uh, MK2, U.S. Navy Mach 2. Um, it's indestructible. I've done video about this before. And there is nothing that can be done with a knife that you can't do with this knife. But with that knife and a saw, my cutting implements, no need for an axe. Oh yeah, here are my other gloves. These are um, more like work gloves. They're not for keeping your hands warm, although they will a little bit. But you can see they've got the heavy texture on the bottom. And they're good for gripping, especially if it's wet and rainy and the stuff you're messing with is wet, slippery. That cargo tape, uh, I like the Gorilla Tape. If you need to make, make repairs or even if you need to lash stuff together and you don't want to waste your cordage or whatever, you can do good lashings with cargo tape. There are a thousand and one uses for cargo tape. Now this is my, uh, just my spork. I like it. It's the UCO brand. It's the fork knife combo. You can see on one side here you got a knife and this will cut a steak and that's got a spoon on that side. You got a fork there. The good thing about it is if you're eating one of those mountain house meals, which I often do, you can, uh, put these together like this and make it longer so that you can scoop down into with the spoon or the fork. All right, as far as candle light, I, I don't like candles, but I do have a Vaunt headlamp. And uh, this headlamp uh, has got the, the flashing, high, low, medium, and flashing. Uh, Rotate. I've done a video on this. You can scroll through my older videos and see one. Um, so I have that. And then I also have this Bell and Howell flashlight. 
and again it's got the dim, medium, bright, flashing, SOS, um, zoom, so two different types of, of lighting. I do have a backup knife. This is a Schrade old timer that I've had since I was a teenager. Schrade USA, baby. You cannot beat this knife. And again, it's an indestructible knife. Um, the old timer a lock blade. And I have that just as a backup. A little tender roll. And I'll feature this in the video. If you look down in there, you'll see some fat wood. And then, of course, I always have in my pocket a lighter. I usually carry this push button pipe lighter. Um, so that's a, a, a second source of ignition for fire. Also, a third is here in my pipe kit. I have a Bic lighter in there as well. So two lighters and a ferro rod. All right, like I say, when I set up, set up my shelter, it's in this, and I have like five feet on the bottom to protect the ground, me from the ground, put a layer there in case the ground is wet. Um, I also carry two large heavy mill garbage bags. And what I can do with these, I'm not gonna open them up. I mean, you've seen a trash bag before. But I can fill these with leaves and pine straw which there is plenty of here in South Carolina, I can fill those up to create somewhat of a mattress, okay? Um, so, plus these bags can be used for lots of other reasons as well. So it's good to have some trash bags. I do have in here also, just because I like to be comfortable when I sleep, an air mattress. And this is one of those uh, inflatable American air mattresses. And again, I'm not going to open it up. The biggest item in my bag is the, uh, the my new tarp, and I'm going to do a video just about this. This is my new uh, Air. I don't know how you pronounce that. Why these companies don't come up with name? Why why don't they just call it the tarp company? Tarps are us. Come up with some names people can pronounce. People. Anyway, I'm going to do a separate video just on this because this is awesome. Now on the side pockets, I have also some important stuff. I have my little fire kit. And in here, again, I've just got some more fat wood. I've got some more uh, cotton balls soaked in Vaseline. I have some, some of these matches, these wind and waterproof matches by Pine Mountain. I also have some, some quick fire in there. So... I think I'm very well covered with fire. Maybe too well, but can you be too covered in fire? With the tinder in here and the tinder in here, these matches, this ferro rod, my lighter in my pocket, my lighter in here, I don't think I'll have a problem starting a fire. On the other side pouch, I have inside of this little Eno bag, this was uh, what my straps for my Eno hammock came in, but I keep them with the hammock. Well, I have two separate components. But the little bag I'm repurposing, and in there I've got my Sawyer mini water system. If I need to use more water than what I'm carrying in my water bottle, in the smart water bottle, um, if I need to go to a stream or whatever and get water, I can filter it with this if I'm not going to be able to boil it with this. So... And then, of course, you have to have paracord. I haven't even used this paracord yet because the tarp, inside of this tarp, at the bottom here, and you'll see on the review, it comes with eight guidelines and eight stakes. So I use this rope, this cordage, for my tarp, but it's always good to have extra cordage. So, um... This is 50 foot of paracord. I just picked it up at Walmart. That's why it still looks nice and neat. Well, I do have a little front pocket here. I've got an emergency space blanket. Um, again, it's very reflective. If you needed to use it for signaling like I am now, you could do that. Or you could use it to keep warm if you get really, really cold. And I've already told you, I'm a cold-natured person. 
Speaking of which, I have two Zippo hand warmers in here. And what I'll do is before I go out, I will fill them with Zippo. And in here I've got this little, I've shown you this before, this little neck knife survival type of thing. And I may or may not, I'm still on the fence with this. That's everything out of the bag. Now I'm going to see if I can get it in my bigger bag. But I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll show it to you after I get it stuck. Alright guys, here it is. Everything is in there. And I'm able to strap my wool blanket on the bottom because there's no way it would fit inside of here. But I do have that other blanket down on the bottom. And my sleeping pad. So, uh, yeah, all I need to do is just cinch it down now and it's ready to go. And then, of course, like I say, my haversack will have my water and food in it. Now I'm ready for winter. There is a little bit more room in the top where I could put an extra layer, an extra pair of socks, which I'm going to add. So I will put some wool socks in there. And then, of course, when you dress properly in layers, you should be fine. So, ready for the winter. Like I say, I'm going to miss my little PKU bag because I love it. And now I could strap on the side here, which I probably will. You see it's got the little loop down at the bottom. And you've got the side straps. That's where I'd put my trekking pole. I usually carry a trekking pole. And then I'll carry my walking stick. I've got a lot going on this week, but... Uh, this coming weekend, we've got Renaissance Fair. I'll try to make a video about that. But um, next week, uh, I plan on getting out here on the property, on the eight acres of property that we have here, and, and doing some testing of all this stuff, because I want to put that new tarp to work. Like I say, I've played around with a few configurations here in the yard, but I want to actually put it to use and get out there and test out this kit, do at least an overnighter, to make sure that I do have everything I need. Because you know why you, you, you know you can do this uh, on a video and you can have everything laid out, but until you actually get out there and spend time in the woods with your kit, you don't really know if you've got what you need or not. You think you do, but there always seems to be something that you forget. If there is something that you guys feel that I've left out, please leave me some comments below. I'd love to hear about it because I want to have a very thorough kit. Bushcrafting is a lot different than comfort camping, car camping or whatever, or even backpacking. Um, backpacking, you try to go with more lightweight gear, and to me that's more comfortable than bushcrafting, but I want to be as comfortable as I can when I do bushcrafting as well. Anyway, so like I say, if there's something that, you, that just sticks out like a sore thumb that I'm completely overlooking, leave me a comment below. And until next time, keep calm, carry on, and keep it outdoors.